Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pui Jing, and I'm the key of councils in Malaysia. So now is uh, 206. Let's start off of our webinar. Thank you for joining us in our webinar on comprehensive and better core design in services. Before we begin, there are some housekeeping rules need your attention. First of all, please put yourself on mute during the presentation. Second, if you have any question or difficulties, please let us know by sending a quick message in the chat box. We shall assist you as much as we can. Lastly, you may put yourself on mute during Q&A session if you have any question. Without further ado, let's get started. Embedded boards and modules are computers that are integrated into other devices and are dedicated to the function of the device. Also refers to as microcontrollers. Embedded boards and modules have been used in medical machinery, motor vehicles, application defense and aerospace, communications, medical, automations and control, automotive and transport. In addition, embedded boards and modules are devoted to performing specific tasks and are used in the entertainment, science and technology. According to the Global Embedded Boards and Modules Market Report, the experts have touched upon the pre and post COVID-19 impacts. The report elaborates the advantages as well as the disadvantages in terms of finance and market growth attained during this crisis. Despite a major economic plug, the embedded boards and modules market have adopted new strategy and development skill to bounce back. The market has started looking for different funding sources and business approaches to sustain on both the regional and global platform. Avante offers industrial grade embedded single board computers in compact size with rugged design, high flexibility and easy expansion capabilities with full range product offering from 2.5 inch Pico ITS 3.5 inch single board of computer, PC104 and EBS. Today, it is my honor to introduce you two speakers, Mr. Edwin Thiel and Mr. Jibi Tan, who will be sharing about the embedded market trends, embedded hardware differentiation, and advanced overview software and platform. First of all, let me call upon Mr. Jibi Bitan, the Intel IoTG FAE in Intel Technology Asia, to share on value-added Intel development tools. Over to you, Mr. Jibi Bitan. Hi, thank you very much, uh, PC Wong. Thanks uh, for invitations uh, for this webinar. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, okay, is everyone can see my screen? Uh, PC, can can see my yes, screen? Yes, can, can, can okay. see. Okay, okay, thank you. So uh, today I I would like to share uh, to all of you on the Intel. Uh, IOTG product that uh, I have a new product launch uh, last quarter, which Q1, uh, 2021. Uh, the new processor, we have a whole range of uh, new processors available. And uh, last Q uh, Q1, we have launched an uh, Intel Atom platform called the Heartland. Right? There's a lot of new feature set in this uh, Atom processor. And of course, we also have launched 11 gen core processor. Right, um, last Q Q one also, right? Uh, they call Tiger Lake, and and also have a lot of new features, wonderful features built in, and similarly we have Geon launch on Ice Lake. But today focus, uh, I will mainly uh, target on the uh, Atom and Intel Core platform, which is Tiger Lake and Intel Lake. Uh, reason being is that they are more uh, towards uh, IoT, edge IoT devices. And I would like to share on this feature set, right? On um, uh, what are, how to choose whether choose Atom processor or choose the, 
the Intel Core platform. Uh, basically, how, what are the features that built into these two processors and how to select it and what are new functions and new features built into this processor. And of course, I also will introduce uh, uh, software uh, and uh, development tools and uh, 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 that, that support for this two platform. Okay. So uh, as one, you can see, this is a, a quite a, a busy slide, but, but it's very good showcase, right, on a Tiger Lake processor. Right, this is a Tiger Lake processor, as you can see. There are uh, functions uh, from compute, media, the graphic, the manageability, and some of the IoT features like uh, real-time, functional safety, and use case, how to choose right in between of these two. Uh, as you can see, uh, today, uh, if let's say uh, people, a lot of people talk about the applications like AI plus Internet of Things, right? A AIoT, they call it. So if let's say, uh, uh, compared to these two processor launch, right? uh, if let's say you are the AI application, right? um, Tiger Lake will be the one because you need more compute power, the one you can choose because the Tiger Lake has the built in a new function, new instruction set. They call it a uh, VNNI, which is called a vector neural record right? interface for instruction for, for helping people who code AI application and accelerate the AI application uh, coding. And this one only available on the Tiger Lake, right? And, and uh, for the uh, manageability, right, the, the high uh, manageability like VPro function, AMT function, means that uh, if let's say you want to troubleshoot, right, uh, that have a remote keyboard, uh, keyboard monitor and mouse, then you, you, uh, there's a, a, on the Tiger Lake platform also. Being said so, uh, the Ehalec, the Atom or Teron processor, the, the Ehalec system, they, they are focused on the uh, uh, display, right? The graphic, they have uh, up to three independent display, right? Can run on uh, one 8K, uh, but the, compared to the uh, uh, Tiger Lake, they can support up to two 8K or four independent 4K display. So there are some, some performance difference also. But good thing is that last time when you talk about Atom processor, Atom system, it won't have an in, uh, uh, out of band management, right? Out of band is like a, a V4 function. We, even though your operating system is down, you still can remote access to the system to troubleshoot and repair the system. But for EHA like this, the first one, right? That built in the out of band management into the Atom system. But uh, the function will be uh, minimum, uh, like power on, reset the system, and reset uh, 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 power off the system. It's a basic function uh, that, that built into this uh, out there. But this kind of uh, uh, atom are more towards IoT application. Uh, Tiger Lake are more towards a, uh, AI application because uh, compute and so on. So uh, for e uh, it's for low power compute. You, you need a device uh, more low power, and 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 they they would like to do some kind of data collection, right? And 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 connect to the sensor and and proxy, right? And send to the to the uh, uh, data center to process and so on. But both of these processor, the beauty of it, they built in the real time uh, uh, function in there, right? You can see. Uh, what it means a real time application. Uh, this is the first time that we built in the real time to Atom processor, Ihale, and to the Tiger Lake, also the Core I family. Uh, the real time uh, 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 protocol, you can see it has a TSM, TCC, we call time sensitive network, time coordinating, compute coordinating. So these two all built into the Ihale and the, and the uh, Tiger Lake processor. And, and later I will share the use case of this uh, real-time application. Uh, but I just in mind that this new processor, both of it built in this kind of real-time features into the processor, right? And of course, uh, there are POSA uh, certificate uh, for Atom. They, some of the uh, feature set already certified. And then uh, for the Tiger Lake, uh, there are POSA essential uh, available. And for the certification, developer need to develop for it. Uh, and all these are uh, 
35 for industrial use uh, in the uh, negative 40 degree to 100 degree kind of a wide range temperature right it's very good for industry application so then i will move into the more details on the tiger lake platform right because tiger lake is just launched and a lot of new features that, that built in and um, at one glance you can see uh, the the tiger lake processor there are uh, new instruction built in, right? Uh, they support VNNI, and the beauty of it, they can support integer eight uh, quantization, uh, model, uh, model quantization to integer eight. This is very uh, that that is uh, up a lot on the AI application to accelerate the application performance without uh, reduce the the accuracy. Uh, it's very minimum reduce accuracy uh, on that. So this is a very useful, and these functions normally last time only on Geom processor. They, they call it Intel Deep Learning Boost in Geom processor instruction set. How it work is basically it reduces the instruction set, right? Uh, let's say the AVS five one two, the three instruction set to complete a thing. Let's say you command one, command two, command three. Uh, three command you need three cycle, right? Three clock cycle to finish a task. Uh, for this VNN, it can reduce to one instruction set, right? So it basically the performance will, will will push up to three times at least, or, or two times, if let's say you optimize for it. And of course, the graphic uh, uh, is good, uh, up to 96 engine unit. This is based on Core i7, right? If let's say Core i5, it will be at the execution engine, right? And, and so on, right? So it can support up to four independent display, uh, uh, four times four K, right, or two times eight K. Uh, and if let's say you use this processor for digital signage, like digital manual, has for a four display, uh, run at the same time, right? Uh, this is very good choice, and you can choose for using this uh, Tiger Lake uh, processor. And just for like uh, we say end to end solution, right? And you can see Tiger Lake, uh, it can place in every from the edge to the car, uh, uh, depend on what kind of uh, 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 application you want to deploy in the edge. You know? Okay, for example, if let's say you're uh, using the uh, the uh, Tiger Lake on the edge devices, you can do a computer vision like video. Uh, Object detection, right? Object detection on on the uh, 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 to detect people counting, for example, in the retail store. So you can use the uh, AI algorithm deployed in um, elevation processor to count the people uh, into the retail store and out to know what is the traffic situation, right? So uh, uh, I think uh, if AI application, you can choose this. Uh, uh, 11 gen processor Tiger Lake for it. Right, it can, and there are a lot of security and technology uh, built into this uh, processor also. Uh, uh, because when we connect end to end and to the cloud, to the internet, uh, we want to ensure the security uh, in there. Right? So, how about the security in this Tiger Lake processor? I, if you can see, it's a whole list when we talk about uh, 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 security. Uh, we talk about encryption of the data, right? Secure the data. Uh, temper proof means that uh, nobody able to uh, monitor your data, right? So how to do that? Don't allow people to 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 uh, monitor your data, right? And uh, look at your data. Basically, you need to encrypt the data, right? So uh, we have a lot of uh, technology built into this uh, processor. You can see a five pillar in there. Uh, one of it, of course, is called uh, Platform Integrity. They have an Intel Boot Card. Intel Boot Card basically uh, is a, 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 a boot, boot up when, when your first program run on your system, right? It's a BIOS, you know, it's like BIOS. It, it, it's the first program that runs when you turn on your computer. That's the first program that runs on your system. And, and Intel Boot Card is uh, basically, you want to ensure, right, the BIOS, Right, uh, 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 have a, a, a right version of it. It's just being secure, being fine for a key. So to encrypt the data, you need someone right to sign for every 
thing that install into your system, including the BIOS. Right? So Intel Boot Guard uh, uh, will help to ensure your or, or, uh, your BIOS firmware uh, uh, being signed and it, it has the uh, uh, locality. You cannot uh, cannot say that uh, put up from another system. So you ensure the locality of the uh, uh, system. They have a development tool called Intel Boot Guard to help you to ensure that. The second thing is that the um, the key, right? When you want to encrypt the data, uh, you need to have an encryption key, right? The encryption key, uh, sometimes they call it certificate. That is a public certificate. We call it public key. They have a public key. That time is called asymmetric key. But uh, but eventually, if you need a key, right? The 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 higher the number, the key you have, the higher the encryption. More difficult for you to. Uh, uh, hack the system and, and, and recruit. So they have an uh, advanced crypto key protection key lock. We call it key locker in this uh, category. Uh, basically, when you want to do the encryption, we have an instruction called AES and I uh, to encrypt the data. But they they will use a key to uh, uh, from the AES and I to to encrypt your data. But your key in the memory, you store in the memory. Uh, if let's say it's a permanent one, then there will be a challenge. Uh, so this advanced uh, crypto key protection is helping you. you they were just a, like a one-time password temporarily uh, in the memory, and then they will change the key uh, frequently. So this is also an, another technology they have in this Tiger Lake, right? So it's like every time they, they will refresh the key to encrypt it. So uh, also they have a crypto, right? Uh, uh, the ONDI uh, certificate. Uh, authorization uh, that built into this processor also, uh, and you can see this is a, 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 a like a certificate authority to ensure uh, uh, that, that the key that is to do to the rest. So they have Intel key mechanism and so on in here. So fast execution engine, uh, they have virtualization technology. They also have uh, 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 this is dynamic application. They have a small small app, uh, Java application that ensure that you're able to communicate to the firmware from your OS to the firmware uh, about the security and of course the remote management capability and so on. So it's a whole list of a uh, uh, security uh, features built into this Tiger Lake. And if let's say you compare right the Tiger Lake versus the previous generation 10 gen, this is 11 gen processor, the 10 gen processor, uh, command lake processor, right? Uh, uh, if side by side comparison. You can see uh, Tiger Lake have uh, more uh, features uh, on terms of security that built into the uh, uh, processor and, and very suitable for for IoT application. Right. Uh, uh, one uh, few few of it just I mentioned the on dice CA the total memory encryption means your your memory uh, RAM right on on your RAM you can encrypt the entire uh, data that store into the in to the memory. So this one all done by firmware. It's transparent to uh, OS user like us, right? But but uh, under uh, under the the circumstances, whatever data like load into the memory RAM, they will all be encrypted. They call it total and uh, memory encryption uh, in this uh, the Tiger Lake, right? And uh, of course, this is like CT. Uh, this like a branch call, a kind kind of a uh, uh, hackers try to steal your interrupt and, and launch another program. Uh, this one also uh, being blocked up by TigerLet. So this one, uh, you can see TigerLet are uh, uh, very suitable for IoT and AI application kind of uh, uh, use case because of uh, a lot of uh, security features that you in, right, compared to others. Uh, not only that, they also uh, have support Windows 10. Right, all these platforms just now we mentioned, you can support Windows 10 and Linux, right? So all fully support. Then you uh, discover, hey, how come Windows 10? This is a uh, more on management. Uh, uh, Windows has their own management function. This one is uh, some mo modified on kernel in the, right? So only Linux available is uh, modified on kernel. But but what uh, the key uh, uh, message here is that the 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 Tiger Lake processor it can support the whole software stack. Uh, on Windows, on the security and the Linux, right? So you can see all the functions that now we talk about. Uh, 
are fully supported in here. Okay, so this is a, a, a basically in summary, right, on the security on Tiger Lake. First, is this like a, a Tiger Lake silicon is like a motherboard, right, a platform. First one, you want to ensure the bootcut uh, uh, is there, so that they they, they will uh, prevent unlock, right, uh, authorized boot lock, blue block every time, right, when the system boot up. They will ensure. They will ensure uh, all the uh, the firmware, all the uh, uh, software that launch is being signed. Being signed means that being authorized, right? Uh, uh, for the the things like like for we, example, Windows they have a trust boot, right? Uh, they, they call it secure boot. You need to enable secure boot, then they will ensure that the copy is a, 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 a authorized copy before they put the OS. And of course, then the second one will be keep, uh, the, the firmware. Once you set up the things, you want to duplicate to other system, right? They have a uh, download and execution uh, uh, firmware that they're able to do, uh, to flash to other system, right? Uh, and also this one already signed uh, with the key, right? And then you can flash other system. And of course, how about your key, your, your, your private key, right? That is very critical. They, they will work with the Intel uh, 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 trust platform module Intel TT platform, they will secure the key into the uh, TPM 2.0 to ensure all uh, uh, being, being uh, safely safe into the system. And of course, then you have a virtual machine or OS operating system that also need to have a, a signature from the discovery key to ensure, signed by, by the key to ensure all the security is there, right? So the, the important is what we call root of trust. Uh, root of trust is all the way. Uh, you validate uh, from hardware, silicon, to firmware, to OS, uh, all need to be secure, right? So it's an entire uh, secure uh, method in, in this way, okay? So besides that, uh, next, I will talk about remote web management, right? The vPro uh, manageability. So this uh, vPro, of course, is uh, support the uh, Tiger Lake processor. They have Tiger Lake vPro. They built in. They, they consist of three things. One, one is the CPU. One is the the chipset need to support vPro, and then third one will be. The GB, GB, we can't hear you. You you are you are on mute. You are on mute. Uh, uh, wow. Ah. Yeah, okay now. Mm. <laughs> so just now, whatever I talk is just talking, no no sound. No no no, just just just, uh, just uh, one minute ago only. Oh okay okay. Uh, mm. <laughs> I heard that just now whatever I mentioned is not oh. no sound at all. So so now uh, just uh, one minute ago no sound. So where where am I? Is it VPro or uh, no, yeah? No, you can start off. Uh, you can uh, start all over again from VPro. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know why it suddenly <laughs> go go. Cute. Okay, sorry about that. So uh, uh VPro is a uh, more more for uh towards for the manageability, right? So uh uh there are uh, ingredients that consist of VPro platform. Uh, of course, one of it is CPU, second is chipset, third will be the networking, right? The networking can be wired or Wi-Fi, wi wi wireless. So, so the, the main objective is that uh, to, to uh, ensure the uh, security and remote manageability. And you can see for the interactive management technology, uh, with, the, with the software that support uh, vPro, Right, that you can do a out, out of band management. Out of band management means that uh, even though your operating system are down, means that corrupted, right? Your OS is corrupted. Um, you still can using the pro technology, right? To remote KVM, remote keyboard VM means that uh, keyboard, video, mouse, etc. Not not the virtual machine KVM. <laughs> Right, so it's a uh, it it's allowed you using your management software. The management software can be a uh, 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 third party or can use the open source. They call it Mesh Center. Right, you can uh, do a remote uh, KVM to 
to boot up the system to BIOS, BIOS interface and set whether you want to, uh, uh, to check whether the hard disk is failure or run some utility program, right? low level utility program to check on your hard disk, check on memory, is it the hardware is okay? If let's say hardware is okay, you can clone the image back from the different partition back to original. Uh, uh, all through through remotely, able you able to do that. Uh, uh, so so it save a lot of uh, uh, maintenance cost when when you deploy your solution uh, system nationwide, right? So that is a very good function. Of course, the uh, remote power control, uh, uh, power on, power off. Uh, Wake from the system, they are available also. And of course, uh, uh, third one would be uh, enhanced remote uh, security rest. If let's say your, your system is being uh, 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 taken away by someone, right, and you want to erase the data, as long as they connect to the connect, uh, internet or connectivity, you, you still have a chance to remote arrest, uh, uh, erase all your data from there, right, in, in management. Right, so uh, new function also includes on Thunderbolt, but this one is uh, more on the consumer product like notebook, right? But uh, for IoT, we still uh, do not uh, use a lot of Thunderbolt for, yeah. but uh, mainly for remote KVM, power on, power off, and some of the management key features. Okay, so far any questions or if no, then I will, will I will I will share some example of uh, the new feature set on of e Lake and the uh, Comet uh, Tiger Lake. They both have this real time application. They call it TCC and TSN. And why is the TCC? Why is TSN? Um, basically, when we talk about real time, right? See some concept. Uh, one important concept is called timeliness. Timeliness is like, for example, um. You 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 want the uh, to send a package right uh, to at the right place at the right time right say for example uh, um, uh, uh, if let's say there are emergency uh, someone has a uh, injury you want to send to hospital you start calling calling hospital so, okay they get ambulance and get the patients from the uh, go to the right hospital at the right time. Uh, it's very critical time time is important so time leader right so so it is it, it, in the data world you send your data to the right place at the right time right that's a time leader puncture right but after you 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 send is a uh, between system and system right when you send the package it's from this system to another system the edge device to to the cloud data center or something like that they need a, a, a auto to a robotic arm robotic arm is another system industrial and your your edge device and that system when you want to send the package over you need to talk about the timeliness the accuracy right it's a between the two systems and then it's two, the second concept called time synchronization right? the time synchronization means that after the data sent to this system let's say the robotic arm the you need to uh, have the uh, uh, io to to free up your resources to start uh, uh, process your data, right? So that it is a, 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 a release the I/O, right? and and allow you to to quickly uh, uh, process the, the 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 data. Just like you send the uh, injured person right to the hospital, and the doctor and the nurse and the operation theater need to be ready and quickly send over it. Uh, it reserves it right, priority for you to start operate your your op uh, operation. Similar kind of concept. So the timeliness, uh, uh, what we call TSN, time sensitive network, is between system and system. Time synchronization is an uh, Intel uh, uh, technology called time uh, computing coordination. Coordination is within, uh, within the system. We release a uh, work with operating system to release the uh, I/O throughput for you. So when you have these two uh, synchronized, right? Uh, first, you will reduce the latency. Uh, the compute. Uh, the latency of these two are uh, 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 reduced. Then sec second thing is a uh, uh, reduced compute. The more important one is time determination, which is that uh, we can predict uh, within this time what, what are the tasks we can do. If no, then what, what will happen and so on. So in real time applications, you can see a lot of uh, uh, operations in industrial. For example, yeah. yeah. Sorry, question.
Uh, any question? Yeah. If not, then uh, you can see, uh, for example, real time uh, uh, opportunity like like uh, factory automation, healthcare, uh, robotics, right? A, a lot of things. The application need a, a very deterministic kind of uh, 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 operation cycle. Take for example, robotic they need one millisecond to hundred millisecond kind of uh, uh, range. If without uh, that, then the accuracy is not there. Right? Aviation even lower. And uh, 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 some of PLC is uh, up to 100 milliseconds. You know, PLC control automation is quite real time also. And uh, uh, motion control and so on. But most of these uh, CPU, uh, Tiger Lake, you can see all these kind of applications. Mainly you can uh, focus on the majority market. Uh, for, uh, for less than like 10 microseconds uh, and, and, and so on, maybe you need to use an FPGA to, to solve this. Right, but major of these kind of application, CPU can handle with that kind of workload. Right. So uh, in summary, uh, just now I mentioned the time synchronization and timeliness, right, uh, are towards on the uh, 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 synchronization, the CPU I/O, and of course the precision uh, between the two systems to reduce latency. Right. So uh, with this, maybe I play a video. I right, to show you the overall concept how these uh, real time applications work right in 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 the real world and the concept. Let me play the video. The Internet of Things has ushered in the fourth industrial revolution and made real time performance of computing and networking elements even more important. For product quality assurance and safety, some sectors like industrial automation, food and beverage, oil and gas, and transportation have strict precision requirements for automation systems. All compute systems are expected to fulfill tasks within a given deadline, which in turn dictates how data travels through a network according to a schedule. When we talk about compute performance, we measure this by number of bytes and how long it takes those bytes to move through a system. We can think of performance as time. Time is comprised of time synchronization and timeliness. Time synchronization means that system components can all agree what time it is and keep the same time across all components. Timeliness means that the system can finish by a deadline or finish on time. Timeliness is measured in duration or latency. Systems that compute in real time must ensure that data throughput is quick, efficient, and runs according to a strict schedule. For example, to maintain system integrity and continued production, a programmable logic controller or PLC in an assembly line must deliver and process data in real time. A missed deadline could compromise the entire production line. Some systems, such as autonomous mobile robots, require real-time behavior. This enables the robot to stop as soon as possible when its sensors detect a wall or a person within a predefined zone. Intel has been working to build timeliness and time synchronizations into hardware to overcome the last inch problem and put real-time behavior into the system itself. We call this Intel Time Coordinated Computing, or Intel TCC. Of the three levels of time, soft, firm, and hard, we're focusing on hard real-time, where a missed deadline could trigger an automatic shutdown of a factory floor or cause equipment to malfunction. High-precision systems in industries like robotics, utilities, oil and gas, and manufacturing require the absolute deadlines of hard real-time. Intel TCC brings timeliness and time synchronization to CPU and I.O. throughput and can help you manage noisy neighbors, applications and services that can monopolize resources and increase latency. Additionally, Intel integrates industry standard time-sensitive networking, or TSN, protocols into different form factors, processors, chipsets, FPGAs, and discrete controllers that can easily work with other hardware. This can help organizations create a networking foundation that can consolidate critical and non-critical workloads on one platform. TSN uses IEEE protocols to deliver timeliness and time synchronization in a system via Ethernet. That is, data will arrive at the proper destination, and that data will arrive on time. The integration of TSN into Intel architecture and Intel's commitment to Intel TCC can help organizations improve the flexibility, scalability, and performance of their real-time applications. Other features of Intel architecture that support real-time performance include cache allocation technology, PCIe precision time measurement, and end-to-end -end virtual channels to help optimize data throughput. 
To develop interoperable, real-time systems, Intel continues to work with multiple standards bodies and industry alliances to define TSN standards for industrial use. Intel is also developing new hardware solutions that support IoT platforms and new use cases. To learn more about Intel's real-time technologies, visit us online. Right. So in summary, uh, I, I wrap up today's uh, download. So first of all, uh, we introduce you the 11, 11th gen Intel Core Processor, Tiger Lake. Uh, they provide a greater compute right, for the edge and uh, with IoT features, like right, real-time features to review in, AI application instructions built in, DNNI, and so on. And of course, uh, a lot of uh, industrial features right, that then uh, it can create a newer use case right, using this uh, uh, Tiger Lake processor and the uh, e processor. And of course, the uh, new silicon features with the software support right, on in terms of security and manageability, and uh, you help uh, to implement the solution and reduce the time right, to market uh, to uh, for, uh, for review. Uh, let's say through the Tiger Lake processor and the Hallet processor uh, uh, system. With this, I end my presentation. I hand over back to PC Wong. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, GB. All right, let's move on to the uh, second speaker, uh, Mr. Edwin Thieu. Uh, Mr. Edwin Thiel, uh is the ASEAN Regional Sales Manager. He's based in Singapore, and today he would like to share on <coughs> more on embedded core design in platform and other value-added uh, differentiation. So over to you, Mr. Edwin Thiel. Okay, so, uh, okay, hi everyone. Uh, you can hear me, right? Yes, you can. can. Okay, okay. 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 okay let's start. Okay. So thanks, uh, thanks GB for the insights. So basically today, uh, I'll be elaborating more on some of uh, uh, what we call the embedded core design in, where we are targeting typically the equipment makers, okay, those who actually want to create their own product, maybe by using an embedded board or a display or some other stuff. So what we are trying to uh, highlight is some of the value added uh, software or hardware features that you all can take take note of, and then so do that for your design. So actually, when it comes to equipment builders, uh, they are, for the past few many years, uh, there have been a wide variety of embedded board form factor, such as uh, PC-104, which is considered a bit legacy now because of the PCI and ISA architecture. Uh, you also have the ETX, XDX, and all these are what you call legacy units, okay? And through the years, more and more different kind of form factor targeting different variety of markets has been released. So in short, uh, we for embedded board level, usually we divide them into two types or two categories of design. One, I the first one is basically I use an embedded board. It can be a small size uh, Pico ITX all the way to a mini ITX, even a micro, micro ATX, uh, which is a one-piece board design. Okay. Then the other type is a two-piece board design where you have a computer module, a CPU module on the top, and then you design your own carrier board. So it's basically a two piece. I have a CPU module put into a carrier board. So I have this two piece design mainly for the flexibility. Okay. It's, there are some who will go for embedded board, make it simplified. Then there are some who will go for the computer or module concept. So who will go for the computer module concept? Typically customers who will go for that is Usually they can't find a, a CTOS or commercial off the shelf embedded board that can meet the requirements. or so maybe they have a very, very small form factor uh, and I need to put a lot of stuff there uh, and you can't find that off, shelf, off the shelf. Or maybe you have additional uh, intellectual uh, IP protection concern or maybe I have an FPGA and all this. Kind of, it's not something that's readily available. Then you usually go for a computer module. So, but recent trend, uh, Compute performance has improved a lot. Okay, and packing more and more powerful processors in smaller form factor, form factor has become more viable. And now we have been listening to 5G, AI, and all these need higher compute resources. So there's actually a new standard called Compish PC, which I'll elaborate more later that utilize and, and uh, leverage on this uh, Compish PC for even more powerful processing. 
So what Advantech does is that we partner with many different technology ecosystem partners such as Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, NXP, Rockchip, TI, and many others to bring all these various options to the market, satisfying wide range of, wide range of requirements. AI too has resulted in a proliferation of more AI inferencing chips. So as you, as you know, when it comes to AI, you have uh, the, the, the top two is usually Intel and NVIDIA that comes into mind. And right now, you start to see newer one like uh, Neuron, uh, K-N-E-R-O-N, or maybe you also will see uh, a lot of ARM uh, platform that in, includes NPU inside, such as the IMX 8M series, and also the Rockchip uh, RK3568 and many others. So you start to see a proliferation of different, different kinds of platform and different kinds of options in the market. Okay. And in Advantech, right, besides providing all these options, we are also starting to go for targeted market. Like for example, if you go for rapidization, maybe it be it for military or defense or mission critical, we start to build more and more different kind of uh, platform for different uh, verticals. So what differentiate us? When we approach the equipment builder market, uh, we're not just bought or display vendor. That means we don't just provide those. In fact, we, we now adopt a more holistic approach. Okay, what I mean by holistic approach? Beyond supplying the embedded board, we added several enhancements, mainly to quicken your application development via different kinds of software tools, firmware customization, or even conformer coding. On the hardware level, we provide ready added on a customized daughter board such as the MIOE or UIO uh, platform, AI acceleration module, which you can add on if you want, because some, some cases is that for certain application, I may need certain action, I may not. We also included some industrial uh, peripherals such as RAM and flash drive, okay, which, which have add-on utilities and various customizable, customizable options. On the software layer, you can see from the top, there is a, we added in a wise device on remote management utility. So what this does uh, is basically uh, the key purpose of this wise device on is to help save maintenance costs. Okay, I can do remote management management of your each device. I can control on off. Okay, and also add in other uh, function that can trigger alert in case of some abnormal behavior. Okay, we have HAI suite. This is uh, actually uh, leveraging uh, Intel Movidus, where in it uh, we incorporate OpenVINO. Okay, and uh, several models, okay, free models, party models. And we also have very importantly, a performance measurement tool. I'll elaborate more on that later. Okay, we are also Microsoft uh, Windows uh, embedded uh, OS distributor. And we also are uh, McAfee and Acronis uh, distributor. And recently we also put in more effort on certain Linux uh, platform. And then the various BIOS and embedded controller features. So we, we also enhance our BIOS uh, customization uh, uh, packages for customers to choose. Okay. Now, in terms of, uh, let's look at the hardware first. When we look at electronic assembly uh, of uh, a typical embedded board, uh, okay, so there's actually an international standard okay, for PCBA, uh, that means PCB assembly uh, manufacturing. Okay. So as you know, a PCB actually involves a lot of components. Okay, and the common standard that's in the market is the IPC A610 standard for how all these PCB are designed and also uh, manufactured. Okay, so there are three classes, class one, class two, class three. Class three is the highest standard. Okay, and in Taiwan, uh, there are very, very few manufacturing plants that are certified to class three standard. Okay, it's actually very rigorous. You have a lot of uh, frequent audit you have to comply to many standards such as lamination selection, plate thin thickness, your soldering joint, uh, and different kind of inspection profile. And all these are actually audited frequently. So what Advantech does is that in both our factory, in fact, we already comply or actually certify to IPCA 6610 standard uh, plus three. Okay, this is not a, a is, is to guarantee or assure a better quality. For white temperature operation, okay. So as, as you know, in, in an embedded industry, uh, sometimes you really put in areas that is either outdoor or maybe near a furnace or whatever that is is, is quite hot. So, uh, okay, sorry. Uh, so in terms of the thermal, okay, when it comes to actually white temperature operation, uh, okay, let me elaborate in a more simplistic way. 
there's actually two types of wide temperature operation services. Okay, so when you look at the data sheet, is it based on thermal shock or is it based on permanently at that temperature? That means when I say thermal, thermal shock means that uh, when they go for tests, it's like within an eight hours per hour, maybe the temperature go up certain degree, then come down certain degree. So it's not permanently at that temperature. Okay, that's we call this the Phoenix test. Then there is also another type that's permanently either it's very, very cold or very, very hot. So you have to be very selectful, uh, selective uh, when you come to a uh, white temperature operation uh, uh, condition. So when we design white temperature operation condition, we have this first start with component selection. Then we usually use a uh, flow term to do simulation, to find out where's the hotspot and see how to redesign or maybe put a different kind of placement on the board lab validation, and then if everything goes well, go for mass production. Okay, so now in, in uh, something that not many customers are aware is that it's actually a common practice uh, by many IPC makers. Uh, when they release white temperature operating model, they don't test for every board. Okay, because actually you, when you test on all these boards, you need a lot of temperature chamber, chamber, temperature chamber to test. Okay, so not every company do that. What they do is that, for example, if you order 200 sets of the board, in fact, they don't test all 200. They will take a lot sizing. Maybe, oh, this 200, I take 50. If that 50, they go for a temperature chamber test, it pass the test, the entire lot pass. So in, so in Advantech, we don't do this kind of lot sizing. In fact, when you purchase a white temperature model from us, we will, every individual board will go for a burning test at white temperature range. Okay, so we we'll go for burn-in test and then when you receive the board, every individual board will have the individual test report. Okay, so this is something that to give customers the assurance that what you have is has been tested. That is really for white temperature use. Conformal coating. Okay, demand for conformal coating usually are driven by, by uh, how to ensure the reliability of your bots or your system. So it's either you're concerned that subjected to dust, dirt, moisture, or fungus, or maybe salt, salt aggression if it's near the sea, I may, want, I may want to adopt conformal coating technique. So we actually provide four types of conformal coating, uh, uterine, acrylic, epoxy, and silicon. Each one have their own advantages, disadvantages. Okay, so just take note that when you do conformal coating, not everything on the board can be coated. Okay, and when it comes to repairs, usually a, a, a key concern because when you want to coat anything, right, you still need to decode, then you can repair it. So sometimes warranty may apply, sometimes warranty may not apply. Just take note when you do conformal coating. Okay, now it comes to uh, BIOS. Okay, this is something where we have actually put in a lot of resource in. Okay, recent, because as you know, when you build uh, uh, equipment, Okay, typically you may want to customize the BIOS to a certain extent because of maybe concerns on security or you want to quicken the boot time, uh, okay, uh, or maybe have certain additional remote backup or redundancy. Okay, so we are going to release something new called a BIOS wizard. So this new BIOS wizard is actually for Avantech portfolio of embedded hardware. It's compatible to both Windows and Linux. Okay, basically you can use this tool uh, we have a intuitive tree view, so you can actually view, edit the configuration. That means when every time when you put up the BIOS setting is to certain setting already has been done. And you can even customize your own, your own boot up screen. Okay, so it's greater flexibility for use. In fact, in Avantech, we have about fifty BIOS engineers in our HQ site. So they're scattered. Some is Xi'an, some in Taiwan. So it's uh, fifty is actually considered a lot you know, for for BIOS team. So we can we can satisfy a lot of different kind of BIOS customization, like what GB has mentioned about boot guard, OS guard, that kind of stuff. Okay. BIOS guard and boot guard. Okay. Now, another area uh, not many customers are aware is that uh, as you know, uh, when sometimes when you want to touch the firmware level, you want to do some programming. Uh, many companies what they give you to use the assembly code. And this is actually quite tough. Okay, so what we did is that we designed an intelligent self-management agent. Okay, we call this I manager. Okay, it can actually allow you to do uh, software control. Okay, so like so how we how it works is basically on our embedded board. We added in an embedded controller chip in our board. So this embedded controller chip uh, 
we also provide you the standardized API. It's always independent. Uh, so you can use Windows, you, can use, you don't care. It's cross-platform. Okay, you can, you can do things like, for example, uh, I want to control uh, my GPIO, uh, brightness level of the screen, if I have a sensor, okay? Uh, or maybe watchdog timer, okay? So the major benefit for this app, uh, iManager, is to help you simplify your own integration, especially when you want to trigger certain on off or whatever on the GPIO. You can you can also add in more security, you can configure it according to what you need, then you boot sequence and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so this iManager right now is version three. Okay, uh, and you can see from here the in-band and out-band. So the outband control, these are the few uh series of uh utilities that we can the software APIs which you can integrate for use with our platform okay so for example i just take one example uh watchdog timer in fact in our watchdog timer we have two types one is the one stage which is the traditional watchdog timer when your system is running and suddenly it hang up to a preset number of seconds maximum is 255 uh you will auto reboot so we also have offer another type of watchdog timer which is a triple stage one so how this triple stage work is that you there's a API for you to actually link to your application when it's running. It will check, is it your application that's hanged, not the entire system hang. If it's the application hang, reboot the application only. If it still doesn't work, then you go for a software reset. It's the second stage. You still cannot then go for a hardware reset. So these are very, very useful features that you can use. Okay, because sometimes you have to reboot the entire thing, means you have to reconfigure. It's very tedious. So it's just rebooting the application. HAI suite. Okay, this is something that's new. Okay, uh, as you know, AI is getting very hot, very popular, and many customers uh, at the edge are trying to adopt more uh, deep learning inferencing on their edge devices. So, if with our HAI product, mostly is basically based on Intel Movidus, we actually in integrate this HAI suite to be a graphical user interface based rather than uh, rather than using command line. Okay, so we included in Intel's Open Vino Toolkit, okay, some pre-trained models from Intel's uh, uh, Zoo, the, the model Zoo, and also added in a deep learning uh, optimizer. So basically you can select your model or maybe a model from the model Zoo, and then you can go and do the translation and then let it run. And then after running it, uh, a very useful tool that's requested by many, many uh, AI uh, developers is that they, they, they tend to wonder, is my model really optimized based on the hardware platform that I have? Okay, so we have a performance measurement tool in there. So you can see from here, the, the right-hand corner, you can see the CPU performance, how much is the GPU, CPU, VPU, how much loading it is, the temperature. And then from there, you can, you can based on that, you can start to tweak your model and see how to further optimize your, uh, your usage to make it the best. Okay, to, to the optimum accuracy level or, or, or whatever that objective that you want to, to achieve. So it's a very, very useful feature. In fact, uh, in Intel, there's also something called a Dev Cloud. So the Dev Cloud is basically uh, like a sandbox. You can use a Jupyter notebook, and then you can actually create your own configuration and then run it in that Dev Cloud, have our hardware in there. So you can actually test it out first and then before you make a purchase. So there are many, many different adoptions. Okay, so this HAI is a very, very useful software. Okay. Now, one star mode, one star uh, very useful software that a lot of customers are using now is we call this the device on. It's a, basically a remote management utility. So as, as, as you know, uh, the, this thing about IoT, it's been a hype for the past few years. And, and you kind of think of it, Internet of Things uh, or IoT suggests that everything can be interconnected. Every devices, everything can be interconnected to share information. So one of the common complaints by customers, especially maintenance team, is how do I manage my devices that's been deployed in the field? Okay, sometimes you just imagine, sometimes when you deploy uh, certain systems in the field, uh, it can be located at a very, very uh, hard to reach area. Maybe uh, it's hang near the ceiling or near a pole like lamppost. Uh, or or maybe for signages, it might be uh, up on the roof or something. So when you want to assess all these hard to reach area, uh, physically assess them, uh, it's a tedious concept. And then sometimes 
maybe you're mounting the things on the expressway, somewhere on the expressway, say you North South Highway in Malaysia. So I may mount some system for traffic monitoring uh, and going through the whole expressway. Something go wrong, maybe I take two hours to reach that location. Uh, this is very, very tedious. So sending your technician engineer to site and back incurs man hour costs, uh, productivity is used, is wasted. Okay, transportation cost is also there. So there's so many hidden costs. So how this wise pass device on or device on is basically when you have a network, uh, be it wired or wireless, uh, I can actually remotely control or manage your end devices, even your board. Okay. Okay. So a quick overview of some of the core functionality of device on. Okay, so I we split them into three. First, the onboarding process. You can actually register your device. Okay. Uh, basically, every of your each device, you just have to install an agent. So when you go to the internet, uh, it can actually detect your agent, your ID. Okay. And then you can actually group them. Maybe all these devices group into one section or what, or you maybe you want to group them by hierarchy. It's up to you. Okay, you can you can actually monitor the situation, monitor, and then you can set trigger. That means, for example, uh, is the unit is on or off. Uh, or maybe uh, hard disk having issues or some other things having issues, you can trigger an alert and go into your uh, phone. That means maybe by WhatsApp, by WeChat, by uh, Line or something like that manner. So mo most of us have our mobile phone. We can actually receive notification okay, on any, any uh, potential uh, errors. Okay, you can actually do more control. I have remote KVM in there, a remote monitoring, uh, remote on all features are also there and very importantly we can also do OTA OTA means over the air update so as you know when you deploy uh, your devices you sometimes do have application updates a new version with some enhanced features needed so instead of every unit I'm going to bring a USB thumb drive going plug 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 and then go and update everything individually I can remotely using device on I can connect in remote KVM in, I want to test it, I want to install it remotely, it can be done. You can also do it by, by grouping. So this actually, if you think on a long run, uh, save you time, energy, and cost. So some of the key features like this, for example, a real-time monitoring, you can have a dashboard, looking at all your device, which is on, which is off, how many hours it's been running. Individually, you can set your different conditions, okay, all the device lists. Okay, and then you can also see the, the usage pattern. Okay, sometimes by looking at this, you somehow rather will know whether uh, this device is giving you potential issues or not. And one key important uh, uh, add-on is that we also, if you're running Windows 10 IoT Enterprise, which is uh, Windows 10 IoT Enterprise included several uh, embedded enabling features where you can uh, do USB dialog, uh, lockdown, UWF, or want to have some gesture lock or whatever, you can also do the setting on it. It's all graphical user interface, so make it easier for you. Okay, we also included Acronis and McAfee uh, software in, as a bundle. Okay, these are the free version. So the free version basically for Acronis, as you know, is more of a backup. Imagine when you have uh, already installed your software, your application, configure everything properly, and then suddenly your maybe your drive uh some software error or bugs that cause a lot of issues and you need to recover it uh if you were to do a fresh installation it's going to be a nightmare it might take you say a few hours because you go to install the os update the patches reinstall the application reconfigure everything that's going to take you hours where a customer will be harping with you with the downtime a chronic is basically to help you do a fast backup recovery in minutes not in hours so it can really save you a lot of headache then the other one is McAfee. So this McAfee that we offer in it is actually for white listing, not black listing. So uh, a simple terminology when we say black listing is more for antivirus. So white listing is also for security purpose. It can actually prevent virus, malware, or Trojan horses. But how it works is a little bit different. The paradigm shift, it is by only allowing uh, a proof executable to run. Because you, you just imagine this way, your viruses or malware, they are also executable files. In, the, in fact, most of them are scripts, they are hidden. So what it does is that if your original system already been whitelisted to certain approved executable to run, anything new that come in, it can't run. Okay, so in, in actual fact, it already blocked it. And then one very key important point, whitelisting do not need virus definition update. 
because you only allow as approved executable to run. So there's no there's no worry about uh, virus detection update. So it's not it's very unlike a blacklisting uh, normal antivirus. So we do have customers who want to save the the, the hassle, the headache, they, they go for this option. So this is basically also on the remote diagnostic or notification. So you can do a remote desktop, screenshot it. And then when there's something that is a bit abnormal, you can set your root engine and then you can send it up by uh, various different options. Okay, so it's, it's a very, very useful software. Now, in terms of the uh, software support, uh, as you know, we are Microsoft Embedded Distributor, Embedded OS distribu Distributor, Acronis and McAfee. That means you provide a full suite. Okay, we are, and we also added in device on. Now, if you look at it uh, for Microsoft, we, Microsoft Windows 10 IoT Enterprise is, I would say it's a superset of Windows 10 Pro. Basically, when I say superset means uh, Windows 10 Pro have all these function and feature. Micro, Windows 10 IoT Enterprise have slightly more because they added in certain em embedded enabling feature. Okay, so, and all these embedded enabling feature like UWF, uh, Unified Right Filter, Keyboard Filter, US Filter, USB Filter, or lock in, lock on setting, and all this kind of stuff, right? Uh, typically, you can customize it, but normally Microsoft give you a CI or command line to do. You're going to memorize it. So, what we provide to you is a graphical user interface. We call it the lockdown utility. You can use this lockdown utility to do your setting in a, in a, chip, in a, in a much more simpli simplistic way. And then, Windows 10 IoT Enterprise also give, uh, is also very popular for two other reasons. Number one, uh, your cost for the license, it really depends on which CPU scheme you use. If you use Atom 30 plus USD, if you use a i3, i5, maybe about 70 plus USD, which is very, very cheap compared to the uh, the OEM version. Okay, then, then if you're, unless you're using Xeon and i7, then it will be the price about the same as the OEM version. And then another, another key uh, factor is about uh, the offerings of Windows 10 IoT. Uh, Windows 10 IoT Enterprise have two types of skill. LTSC, which is a long-term service channel, and another one is called semi-annual channel. So the long-term service channel is the type that most customers ask for. Why? Because you see, uh, Microsoft Windows, uh, when they do update, uh, they will regularly give you updates. And a normal Windows 10 Pro, uh, you have to update. You know what I mean? So what happens is that when they give a new patch or update, uh, maybe today, Within 365 days from the day they release the patch, you have to update it. It's, it's a default in Windows 10 OEM. The, the problem is when such update create conflict with your application, you're going to be in deep shit. So LTSC has this option of don't allow such updates. You have that option. So it's so you don't you just imagine you have deployed a few hundred units on site and then such update give you it gives you issues, you have a hard time. So LTSC gives you that flexibility, that authority. Okay. Linux. In Linux, uh, especially Ubuntu. Okay. Um, there's so many distribution of uh, uh, Linux. Ubuntu is actually, I would say, the consider the most popular. Okay, and, and let's look into market share. Ubuntu uh, in worldwide, uh, the market share for Linux distribution is in fact is more than 40%. Okay. As, when we face customers more using certain various form of Ubuntu, uh, okay, and mainly I would say why Ubuntu attracts many is because uh, many uh, libraries uh, is are available if they want to do application development, okay, and moreover when you install it, the drivers are also bundled in, so it's it's less headache. You don't need to go and look hunt around for different different kind of drivers, okay. So what happened is that. When it comes to Ubuntu OS, we started to do more enhancement. We've been, we have a close working relationship with Ken Kota, which is the Ubuntu's owner. Lah. Okay, it's going to be a company behind Ubuntu. So we actually sign up a yearly annual support package, not cheap. Okay, and then if you face any issue okay, with our image okay, uh, or any conflict, you can actually look for us. We can help you on that aspect. Okay, but just I just want to highlight one thing about Ubuntu not many people are aware okay when people look at ubuntu linux most people will think it is free in reality it is not free if you use ubuntu linux for personal use yes it is free 
if you use Ubuntu Linux for commercial use, in reality, it is not free. In fact, there is a small fee. It's, it doesn't cost more than USD $20 per device. But there is a small fee that is needed to be paid to Kenneth Konica. Okay, this is not, not something that everybody is aware of. Just take note when you deploy. Because when you build your own equipment, you want to deploy out for use. In actual fact, it is not free. The only question is whether Ubuntu enforce this or not. Okay, so but on the legality aside, it is not free if it's for commercial use. So when we what we do is that we build do some pre-built images with Ubuntu and we update all the security fixes. So basically what happened is that when you purchase our hardware using Ubuntu image, we regularly will update that image, the kernel, and also fix security bugs. So like a few months, we will update and change it. So sometimes having uh, this kind of support is also good. Okay, you can have uh, security updates, official support from Kenneconia. And then another issue is that avoid commercial litigation or if there's any legal vibration from certain community licensing. Okay, so this just take note for Ubuntu. Now, peripherals. We have, we, as you know, when you get the board, sometimes you may need a display, you may need a flash drive. And the common complaints is, okay, when it comes to flash drive, oh yeah, this one is a commercial pro uh, consumer product. Uh, every one to two years, I will, it will face up. And I have to think of second source. So we have started to address all these different uh, user requirements or, or demand. Okay, so for example, in terms of industrial display, most of the cases for equipment builders, they look for a display kit. Then they can customize it. If the indoor type, we have the outdoor type, all are industrial displays. Okay, and there are customers, especially those in the medical, who need a medical grade display. We also have that, some supporting DICOM. And then there's also another part is the warranty. And also warranty, the product availability. Product availability in the sense of maybe I need it uh, uh, seven years, eight years of production. Uh, a typical industrial display usually will face out in three to four years. So sometimes I may need to commit longer. So we, we, we do provide that option. Okay. And then open frame is usually for kiosk. And then curve. Curve monitors are typically used more for gaming. And some of these gaming, uh, they have LED like strip at the side. Okay, if you go to casino, uh, you can see that. So we have added in all these added options for customers to choose. Okay, and to make it even more advantageous, we added in a device on display software. Okay, this one is very useful, especially if you are a kiosk maker or you have many, many display around your plant or, or, or over the place. So as you know, uh, when you want to do uh, maintenance of the display, uh, maybe I want to do calibration. I want to maybe on or off the display or do some uh, OSD software control. Okay, so I can actually use our device on display to run it. So basically what happens is that your display will be connected to a PC, right? So that PC install our device on display. So for example, if I have a kiosk or you have an equipment, I do not need to open up my equipment and access behind to control all the OSD. I can actually use either a tablet or maybe at the back end, my own server or, or back end, I can actually group all these together. I can configure them. And then I can also check uh, diagnostic damage if there is some issues. So you just imagine in this way, this, uh, this software is actually free of charge. You can do brightness adjustment. I can uh, on or off my touch screen. I can calibrate it remotely. Okay, and I can also monitor the backlight. Backlight is actually, uh, when you do a consumer display, typical backlight may be 20, 30K uh, hours, whereas industrial usually on average about 50K. So, last longer. Lah. So, you can actually do all this backlight monitoring. So, you know a pre-MU when you need to replace the display. Okay. So, last few is uh, flash drive. We have our own industrial grade flash drive. So, industrial grade flash drive in the sense of, just like I mentioned about product availability. So we do have certain flash drive that can last, not say last, I would say, uh, when you want to purchase them, you do, it doesn't phase out so fast. It may be three to five years. So let us know beforehand. We will, we will advise you accordingly. We have some flash drive that's actually for the defense industry or the government sector where they may ask for SED or even FIPS. FIPS 140-2 is even harder to pass because when you want to pass this, right, uh, it's line by line code check and it's not, not cheap. It's a six digit. Oh, to get the certification. So we have certain models that have really have such certification. We have some that's white temperature, 
And then besides this, we also added in several very useful utility. Like you see on, this, on the screen here, I have a live monitoring, depending how long my flash drive is going to last. So when, it's, when you start to see dropping lower and lower to the red zone, means before it, before it fails, please go and replace it. Okay. We have a security ID. This is actually very useful. Why? What happened is that when you're when you have uh, some customers are uh, they're worried their the application is being cloned. They know the product is from Avantech. You know, the customer will go and buy everything from Avantech. So what we do is that we give you an API. Every time in your application, uh, when it runs, uh, they look for certain security ID which you or your programmer knows only. Okay, this security ID will be part in the flash drive. It cannot be cloned. Whenever a customer wants to clone anything, everything can be cloned, the ID cannot be cloned. It must be manually keyed in. So when your customer clone it, right, they do not know the ID. Straight away, your application runs, they can't find the ID, it kick out, it can't work. So it's, it's some form of intellectual property protection. We also have things like emergency erase. If you're in the defense industry, sometimes uh, uh, you've been attacked, you want to erase all your data, we can actually write all zero by keying a command or we also have another option if you want to further customization, kill the firmware. Once we kill the firmware, you return to us, we also can't do anything. Okay, it's basically lost. Then we also have a flash lock. Uh, for example, my this device is connected to maybe three or four peripheral, maybe barcode scanner, printer, or something. Uh, as long as one of my devices is not there, it can't run. So these are very, very useful features. Okay. We also have different kinds of power failure protection. So it depends on your vertical that we advise you accordingly. RAM, okay. Our RAM, uh, we also have add-on software for it. So it's not a typical RAM where you see uh, nowadays when we do RAM uh, selection, uh, the most of the golden finger, the, the thickness is only about three micron. We actually increase it 10 times, 30 micron. It's very useful, especially in a vibration prone environment. So you don't face signal loss issue. Uh, we have added in a PSD where presence sense detect is actually a software on the, on the which you can assess can set certain trigger point of thermal issues, or you can also set the speed. I can lock the speed. For example, uh, as you know, for example, DDR4, I have uh, 320029332400266. I can lock which speed I want instead of letting the RAM decide. Because sometimes when they let the RAM decide, uh, there's always issues. Sometimes you face this issue, you become intermittent issues, you have a headache. So we provide that kind of flexibility. In fact, we also provide a ruggedized RAM uh, for certain other industry. Now, computer or module. This is, a, like I mentioned, there's embedded, there's also computer or module. So computer or module, actually, uh, if you look at it, uh, it's a very flexible standard. And they are actually, right now, there are three types. Uh, computer or module, Com Express, is very popular, many, many types. And then there's also the smart. Smart is uh, and Q7. Smart and Q7, both are golden finger. Smart got more pins only, and some are reserved pins. So. The, the main idea is that you build your own, take the CPU module and build your own carrier board. So we have a website. If you use our computer module, we have a website called com.advantech.com. You just key in that. You can go to a website. You can actually download uh, all our uh, uh, design schematic, uh, maybe for the development board uh, or guideline uh, and all these kind of things. So there are some design guide and all that. So you can use that to help quicken your own development. Okay, and for the thermal heat sink, typically you see the standard standard way is that I have a flat top heat sink, heat spreader, we call it heat spreader. Then I can put my own heat sink on top or you want to have a whole piece. These are quite standard. Okay, then recently, as you know, processors are getting hotter. Uh, I, due to higher demand, I may have a hotter processor. The thermal design power, the TDP may be even higher. Uh, and usually when you have a high TDP, right, you, you need to design your heat sink the fins to be longer, deeper, and the height becomes an issue. Uh, and when the height becomes an issue, sometimes certain end product, oh, this one becomes my unit is a bit bulky. I need something very slim or oh, where height is controlled. So we came up with this new uh, patented quadro flow cooling system. So how it works is that we use heat pipe below, okay, special design, two fins, two fans, and then based on the design, uh, we have make it very, very slim to as, as much as only 27 mm thick. Okay? And it can accommodate 45 watt thermal design power processor without throttling at 60 degree. Okay, so the third option is that we can also help you do customization uh, if, you, if you need. So this is a very quick overview how it looks like. It's very slim, 
and very low noise. Okay, so it, it does attract a few customers who really have space constraint. So just now I mentioned the new standard COM HPC. The HPC means high performance computing. Okay, so this is actually a very, very new standard. Uh, so I take this opportunity to introduce this. Okay, so when we say COM Express, uh, what comes to mind? Usually you'll hear all the type two is now not so popular. There's type six, there's type seven, then type 10. Type 10 is the COM mini, the smallest one. Okay, these are actually meant for general embedded use. So as, in, as I highlighted in the initial part of my speech, uh, nowadays you have 5G, your AIoT, uh, edge computing, uh, you, you start to see needs for larger data set, higher bandwidth, or even real time where I need bigger bandwidth to run. So all these new, and then there are also newer technologies up and coming like PCIe version five, they can go 32 GT per second, USB version four, or maybe uh, network bandwidth that one gig is not enough. I need 2.5, I need 10G, I need 225 g So this kind of high performance computing becomes the next thing that is, uh, that's gained a more attention. In fact, there are two types. Either I have a server module, which I got two form factor, two sizes, or a client module, which is three sizes. So as you can see on the right, these are all the different kind of potential application that people are looking at. So COMHPC, look at the left side, there's the, the one in blue, uh, ABC is actually for client, uh, COMHPC client. D and E is for server, like slightly larger. So the one you can sh I can show you a picture of how a COM HPT, HPC works. You can actually design a carrier board uh, that is uh, that can fit. Maybe if you want to do a client, I can currently I'm using A, type A. Maybe in fact, I may use B or C. I can build one carrier board that I can standardize. I can use between the all of them. And then at the right side, you can see all the different features on the server and the client. Okay, server obviously you have more lanes. Lah. Okay, so and the, in actual fact, uh, even the embedded EEPROM uh, for the COMHPC is actually bigger. You can store more information, like your configuration, your IO configuration, your vendor code, your, your IO number, your bot to bot pin also is, is also bigger, about 400 pin, not the per slot, better than 220 on the typical COM Express. Last few slides. Now, now comes to the embedded bot. So what differentiate Avantex embedded bot compared to many others? We actually enhance our design. PCB standards, we use a higher rating uh, TG. Basically, we use TG 150, 170 as our baseline. The higher TG means the higher tolerance to heat. So if it's something you're running, you're going to run it very hot for about maybe a few years, it doesn't work at all. So it's, it's a better higher tolerance, higher temperature tolerance. Our PCB design, most of is 2mm thick. If having 2mm thick means layer to layer, there's more space lesser signal integrity issue, also better for anti-vibration. Most of our bots meets ESD level four, not level two. Okay, if you do level four for medical or maybe military deployment, much more easier to pass medical grade. Secured mounting, we don't, we don't do the push to push tip type of uh, mounting, we use screw on so that even multiple years uh, is still stable. We use a higher quality X7R capacitors instead of the Wi-Fi uh, Wi Wi V types. Uh, we have added on a MIOE expansion, as you can see from here. This is assuming uh, that you have your own standard board at the top, but then at the base board, uh, I may want to create a daughter board that can make it easier for me to expand. So we do have customers who are looking into that kind of expansion. So this is something like Midway. If I use a Com Express, I don't need to design my own carrier board. By itself, it doesn't work. But if I use the MIOE and I only need all this signal, I can create a daughter board instantly because my main board I can change. Oh, it's still a working set. And we also have device on and customization all on it. So we also start to go into ruggedization. Ruggedization in the sense of we added in more on board memory, EMMC, uh, put everything soldered on uh, just to make it easier for you, uh, for you. So some of our boards are designed for it. So this is the MIOE extension, like I mentioned a special high density IO connector, which we do have standardized uh, uh, daughter board, but you can also customize your own. We have design guide that you can use. So this is basically a, a quick overview of how it works, okay, and how it looks like. So these are the, depend, uh, some, some platform, maybe there's more PCIe Express will give you more. 
or it depends. USB is up to you to convert. Lah, okay. So other add-on customization, if you, for example, you worry about vibration prone area, then you may look at underfill or corner bonding. Okay. Then uh, in terms of uh, uh, securing, in terms of thermal, for example, if I have a high temperature environment, uh, less than 60 degree, I can use hot glue to secure my RAM. Else it will be on board. Lah. So the, on, but if it's too high, then you have to use MS dial, MSDS dial coming. This is uh, something like a hot glue, but can withstand higher temperature. Okay, and we also can customize with a lockable connector if you want, if there's a need. Okay, so these are the various options that uh, uh, I have for today. Uh, some of the different design, embedded design uh, options. So just uh, to take note or to summarize, we are not just a hardware supplier. We do provide you add-on software or customization uh, that you can also leverage on for your design or build. Okay, uh, it comes to the end of my slides. Thanks everyone.